All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I'm Sunil Barma. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to inaugurate Uttar Pradesh Global Investor Summit 2023 in Lucknow today. Prime Minister to flag off two Vande Bharat trains and launch several infrastructure projects in Mumbai this afternoon. Campaigning intensifies for Tripura Assembly polls. ISRO to launch SSLV D2 carrying three satellites from Sri Harikota this morning. Death toll surpasses 21,000 in devastating earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. Kelo India Winter Games to begin in Gulmarg today and in cricket, India to resume at overnight score of 77 for 1 against Australia on day 2 of Nagpur Test in Border Gavaskar Trophy Tournament. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will visit Uttar Pradesh and Maharashtra today. In the morning, Mr. Modi will visit Lucknow to inaugurate the Uttar Pradesh Global Investor Summit 2023. He will also inaugurate Global Trade Show and launch Invest UP 2.0. Around 10,000 delegates, including over 400 participants from 41 countries, top industry leaders, union ministers, several ministers and diplomats from 10 partner countries, along with CEOs of leading companies, are expected to attend the three-day summit. We have a report. The UP Global Investors Summit is a flagship investment summit of the government of Uttar Pradesh. The state government has made elaborate arrangements for the summit. Investors and businessmen from all across the country and from abroad also have reached Lucknow to participate in the summit. The state government had been working for the summit from last six months. Many road shows were organized in the country and even in abroad to attract the investors. First time district level investor summits were organized to rope in the local businessmen and entrepreneurs. The summit will bring together policy makers, industry leaders, academicia, think tanks and leaders from across the world to collectively explore business opportunities and forge partnerships. Sushil Chandra Tiwari, AIR News, Lucknow. Ahead of his visit, the Prime Minister in a tweet said he looks forward to being in Lucknow to take part in the summit. He said Uttar Pradesh's development strides have drawn several investors to the state. Mr. Modi said this has created opportunities for the youth of the state. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath said the summit is an opportunity to showcase the state's strength to the world. He said the summit will bring huge investment in the state which will create job opportunities in districts and villages. Talking to AIR News, additional Chief Secretary of Uttar Pradesh, Navneet Segal, said the summit is expected to attract investment worth 27 lakh crore rupees. विदेशी कंपनियां बड़े कॉर्पोरेट देश में निवेश करने के लिए इच्छुक हैं और उसी क्रम में जब उत्तर प्रदेश का प्रतिनिधि मंडल गया माननीय योगी आदित्यनाथ जी के निर्देशन में तो पाया कि बहुत सारे विदेशी निवेशक हैं वो उत्तर प्रदेश भी आना चाहते हैं तो उसी क्रम में जो है ये ग्लोबल इन्वेस्टर समिट का एक इंपॉर्टेंस बढ़ गई है और मैं आपको बताना चाहूंगा कि देश के सभी प्रमुख शहरों में भी निवेशक सम्मेलन आयोजित किए गए सरकार द्वारा बनाई गई निवेशक की फ्रेंडली नीतियां हैं उनको देखकर और जो एक इकोसिस्टम बिजनेस का बना है इंडस्ट्री Later in the afternoon, Prime Minister Modi will visit Maharashtra to flag off two Vande Bharat trains and launch several infrastructure projects. The Mumbai Solapur Vande Bharat train will be the ninth Vande Bharat train in the country. The new world class train will improve connectivity between Mumbai and Solapur and will also facilitate travel to important pilgrimage like Siddheshwar in Solapur, Akkalkut, Tulzapur, Pandarpur and Arandi. While Mumbai Sainagar Shirdi Vande Bharat train will be the tenth Vande Bharat train in the country. It will also improve the connectivity of important pilgrimage centers in Maharashtra like Nashik, Trambakeshwar, Sainagar Shirdi and Shani Shingnapur. The Prime Minister will also dedicate the second part of Santa Cruz Chembur Link Road, SCLR and Kurar Underpass with Prarthana. This is Jivan Bausar, AIR News, Mumbai. In the evening, Mr. Modi will inaugurate the new campus of al Jamia to Saifiya, the Saifiya Academy at Marol in Mumbai. al Jamia to Saifiya is the principal educational institute of the Daudi Bohra community which is working to protect the learning traditions and literary culture of the community. 
The Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, will be launching small satellite launch vehicle SSLVD-2 at 9.18 this morning from Sriharikota. The countdown for the launch began in the wee hours today. SSLVD-2 will be carrying three satellites with a total weight of 175 kilograms, including Earth Observation Satellite, Janus-1 and Azadi-Sat. All the satellites will be launched into a 450-kilometer planar orbit. More from our correspondent. The stage is all set for the launch of SSLV D2 and last-minute tests are being monitored by the scientists at the Satish Dhawan Space Center. The three-stage launch vehicle will inject all the three satellites within 15 minutes after the lift-off from Sri Arikota. The Earth Observation Satellite EOA-07 is designed by ISRO and will be used for Earth observation purposes. Janus-1 is sent by Antares of the United States and will feature five different payloads running on its satellite software once in orbit. Azadi Sat 2 is designed by 750 students to demonstrate low range and amateur radio communication capabilities and measure radiation levels in space and demonstrate expandable satellite structure. Joy AR News, Sri Harikota. In Tripura, 200 additional companies of Central Armed Police Forces reached the state yesterday ahead of the assembly polls. Official sources said they are being deployed across Tripura to maintain law and order situation. Prior to this, 200 companies have already been deployed in Tripura. Meanwhile, several senior leaders are campaigning in the state to get the support of the voters. Polling for the 60-member Legislative Assembly in Tripura will be held on the 16th of this month, while counting of votes will take place on the 2nd of March. Our correspondent brings a report on the Town Bordowali Assembly seat. The prestigious town Wardwali seat of Agadala city is all set to witness the repeat of last year's by-election. The present Chief Minister Dr. Manik Saha defeated his nearest Congress rival Asis Kumar Saha in the by-polls. This time also, both the leaders are up against each other from the same seat. A former TMC and BJP leader and a three-term legislator Asis Kumar Saha rejoined the Congress from the BJP last year. There are a total of 47,000 voters in the town Bordoli constituency. Manas Patim Sarma, AR News, Agatala. Today is the last date for withdrawal of candidature for the assembly elections in Meghale and Nagaland. In Meghale, after the scrutiny of papers, nomination of 375 candidates were found valid, while in Nagaland, 200 papers were found valid after the scrutiny of documents of 225 nominees. Nagaland Chief Electoral Officer said seven candidates have withdrawn their candidature yesterday. Both states will go to polls on the 27th of February and the counting will take place on the 2nd of March. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates from the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Nikal Pade, स्वतंत्रता संग्राम की सुनी अनसुनी कहानियों के साथ मुट्ठी भर अंग्रेज और हमारे विशाल देश पर राज करने का स्वप्न देख रहे पर हम इनके स्वप्न को चकना चूर कर देंगे सुनिए स्वराज का ऑडियो संस्करण शनिवार को पूर्वान्न 11 बजे से ऑल इंडिया रेडियो नेटवर्क पर In a highly significant development towards making India self-reliant, lithium reserves have been found for the first time in the country in Riasi district of Jammu Division. Speaking at the 62nd Central Geological Programming Board meeting in New Delhi yesterday, Union Mine Secretary Vivek Bhardwaj disclosed that lithium reserves have been discovered in Jammu and Kashmir. Lithium blocks are a rare mineral much in demand for electric batteries, which is the future. Lithium is a non-ferrous metal and is one of the key components in rechargeable batteries for mobile phones, laptops, digital cameras and electric vehicles. It is also used in some non-rechargeable batteries for things like heart pacemakers, toys and clocks. President Draupadi Murmu will be on a two-day visit to Odisha from today. The President will grace the Foundation Day celebration of Gyan Prabha Mission in Bhuvaneshwar today. Later, she will grace the second convocation of Ramadevi Women's University in Bhuvaneshwar. Tomorrow, the President will inaugurate the second Indian Rice Congress at ICAR National Rice Research Institute in Katak. 
Uttarakhand government has approved the Uttarakhand competitive examination measures for prevention and prevention of unfair means in recruitment ordinance 2023 to ensure transparency and fairness in competitive examinations. The ordinance aims to prevent use of unfair means in recruitment examinations in the state, making it a cognizable and non-bailable offence. More than 21,000 people have been killed by the massive earthquake that struck Turkey and Syria. The 7.8 magnitude quake struck early Monday as people slept in the region. At least 17,674 people have died in Turkey, according to Turkish authorities. At least 3,377 have been killed in Syria. Agencies and rescue workers have warned that the figures are likely to rise higher with many people still trapped under the rubble. Extreme cold weather is hampering rescue efforts to search for survivors of the deadly earthquakes. Australian government will remove Chinese-made cameras from its offices over spying concerns. This was stated by the country's defence minister, Richard Marles. The concerns were raised by Senator James Patterson of the opposition Liberal Party who said that he had conducted an audit of Chinese-made security devices in use on Australian government premises. The third edition of Khelo India Winter Games will begin in Gulmarg in Baramulla district of Jammu and Kashmir from today. Union Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Anurag Singh Thakur will be taking part in the opening ceremony of the five-day event today. More than 1,500 sportspersons from across the country will be participating in nine different winter sports disciplines during the five days. Hello India, hello India. The sports event is being organized after the successful conduct of the first two editions. Jammu and Kashmir holds the distinction of having topped in both the previous editions of the Khelo India Winter Games held so far. In cricket, India will resume their first innings at the overnight score of 77 for 1 against Australia on day 2 of the opening test of the four-match Bordeaux Gavaskar Trophy in Nagpur today. Skipper Rohit Sharma with 56 runs, and R. Ashwin, without any runs, are at the crease. Yesterday, India restricted Australia to 177 runs in their first innings. For visitors, Manas Lebushen was the top scorer with 49 runs. Ravindra Jadeja took 5 wickets and Ashwin 3 wickets earlier. Australian skipper Pat Cummins won the toss and opted to bat first. And now, for a look at today's newspapers, it's over to Subhadra Ramachandran. Thank you, Sunil. Hindustan Times quotes the U.S. State Department as saying that the Chinese surveillance balloon that traversed across U.S. territory is capable of spying in communications and a similar operation was conducted in more than 40 countries. In Moscow, Dobhal discusses strategic ties with President Putin is a top headline in the Tribune. For the first time since the Collegium system was instituted 25 years ago, the Supreme Court Collegium has recommended names of future Chief Justices in High Courts of Allahabad, Calcutta, Gujarat and Chhattisgarh, writes the Times of India. Many Kashmir areas receive fresh snowfall, reports the Asian Age, while Hindustan Times quotes IMD as saying that winter may be over in Delhi, with the city recording a maximum temperature of 29.4 degrees Celsius yesterday. And finally, the Indian Express carries the story of Sonam, the new youth national record holder in 2,000 meters steeplechase, who delivers parcels door-to-door in Delhi, while her father works in a brick kiln and mother is a farm laborer. With that, it's back to you, Sunil. Thank you, Subhadra. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to inaugurate Uttar Pradesh Global Investor Summit 2023 in Lucknow today. Prime Minister to flag off two Vande Bharat trains and launch several infrastructure projects in Mumbai this afternoon. Campaigning intensifies for Tripura Assembly polls. ISRO to launch SSLVD2 carrying three satellites from Sriharikota this morning. Death toll surpasses 21,000 in devastating earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. Kalo India Winter Games to begin in Gulmark today. And in cricket, India to resume at overnight score of 77 for 1 against Australia on day 2 of Nagpur Test in Border Gavaskar Trophy Tournament. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.gov.in 
and news on AIR app. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.